Hey guys, we're back. Um, so uh, I want to now shift to taking a little of a global lens uh, on account aggregator. You know, as you know, many countries around the world are interested in the construct of, of data empowerment, uh, data governance, and financial data sharing. You know, the EU has been thinking about the e, uh, PSD2. The uh, UK has been thinking about open banking. Australia has been thinking about, the Treasury Department has been thinking about a consented data sharing framework. So this is truly something that uh, many other countries are looking at. Um, and so uh, we we thought we'd bring someone here from the international community uh, who you can hear from. Uh, and we thought there was no one better than Mr. Siddharth Tiwari, uh, you know, who's currently the regional uh, uh, director of Asia and Pacific at the Bank of International Settlements. And I think he'll agree with me uh, when we say the Bank of International Settlements is one of the most uh, uh, powerful, powerful and productive international organizations, you know, really efficient coordination where it's the central bank of all central bank, so all the central bank governors come together at the Bank of International Settlements. Um, and so, so we're really happy to have you here with us today, Mr. Tiwari. Uh, I, I'll, I'll turn the floor over to you. Thank you, Kamya, and thank you for inviting me uh, to this event. I'm honored to be part of this August gathering. We at the Bank for International Settlements have been observing with keen interest the tremendous progress and innovations made in India in the past few years. We look forward to working with the Reserve Bank of India and other innovators in India to share the Indian experience and approach with the broader international community. In my brief comments today, I would like to provide a global perspective on the account aggregator model. Globally, most countries have privacy laws that recognize the rights of individuals over their data. These laws give data subjects, consumers like me and businesses in this case, the opportunity to exercise control over their data through the granting or withholding of consent to the use and transfer of these data. However, consumers find it difficult to effectively operationalize this consent for two reasons. Firstly, a service provider usually seeks consent to use and transfer data at a time when a consumer is agreeing to participate in an activity with the service provider. Since this consent is sought ex ante for a wide variety of possibilities, it is broad and it is sweeping in nature. Secondly, newly created data are often gathered and retained in proprietary silos and stored in various institutions in incompatible formats. Consumers can find it difficult to share their data as they have only limited options to combine data requests across institutions. Thus, service providers who are custodians of data effectively act as the de facto owners of data. Inaccessible data, including data isolated in silos, represent a significant cost to consumers and to society. What is this cost? The digital footprint of consumers has increased dramatically as more and more activity has moved online. Advanced computing techniques have enabled this ever expanding data footprint to provide benefits. Traditionally, economic systems ensure that individual and businesses have ownership rights over commodities they create but this is not the case with data. The cost is therefore the absence of ownership on the part of individuals and businesses and the consequent absence of the benefit that this ownership would bring. So you may ask, how can this be corrected? Correcting this requires a granular consent-based data governance system that is user-friendly and has low transaction costs. Such a system will preclude the need for consumers to provide the broad sweeping consent 
I described earlier. A robust consent-based data sharing system has the potential for consumers to derive value from their data while maintaining control. When used appropriately, many benefits can result from access to a large stock of comprehensive transactional and locational data on an individual or an individual's information capital, as we call it. As a concrete example, let us look at financial intermediation that was talked about before. The World Bank Findex data shows that while significant gains have been made in bringing individuals into the formal financial system, many account holders do not save funds in their accounts and even a smaller proportion are in a position to borrow from the system without collateral. This is not just a developing country or emerging market phenomena. It is true in jurisdictions with high levels of income, high education, including financial literacy, and near universal bank accounts. The, as discussed earlier, there are two reasons for this. One, tangible capital as collateral is key to lending. The young take time to accumulate tangible collateral and the poor never do. Second, these low margin, high risk consumers are uneconomical to reach. Academic research has shown how information created by the monitoring of financial intermediaries could allow firms with low value collateral to finance their investments. More recently, transactional and locational data gathered from these potential borrowers' activities, including online activities, have been used by banks to lessen their dependence on tangible collateral. A readily available consent-based data sharing system, which is both user and business friendly with low transaction costs, is essential for consumers and businesses to share data for their benefit. In India, the account aggregator system, or AA as it is called, uh, provides uh, one uh, example uh, of the owners of allowing them to control data where information is shared, with whom, and for how long. The AA consent data sharing framework allows individuals and small businesses to use their personal financial data or information capital in the manner described above to gain access to improve financial services, including lending, insurance, savings, and securities. Many people ask whether such a system can be developed to scale. We've seen in the past that India has leveraged technology very successfully for the public good. Previous BIS work has shown how the public sector in India has used technology to leapfrog traditional development processes by facilitating both the opening of bank accounts and making of payments. A digital ID steered by the state helped more than a billion people to gain access to the banking system. Layered upon this is a fast payment system, UPI, that is interoperable, allows for open contestable entry and operates within the regulatory framework. It has made payments universally available in the country. Such a data governance system would also be the next layer for the India stack, which is a shining example of how a unified, multi-layered set of public digital platforms can combine to provide substantial benefits to the population. From promoting financial inclusion and increase efficiency to enhancing financial stability. In the India stack, while the official sector defines the regulatory framework and 
the private sector is encouraged to engage in innovation and manage the consumer interface. In other words, it seeks to build a balanced framework between protecting consumers on one hand and supporting market innovation on the other. Finally, what should a global approach to data governance look like? The data empowerment and protection architecture in India seeks to ensure that standards are open and interoperable and that consent is granular, revocable, auditable, and secure. Yet this alone may not be sufficient. In the absence of a globally coordinated approach, data could remain in walled gardens and owned by private service providers, or innovation will migrate to jurisdictions with the lowest data protection standards. This, in turn, could compromise both privacy and the creation of publicly available large data sets, which are key for competitive innovation. Thus, to complement initiatives like DEEPA and the account aggregator, we very much need an international discussions on these important issues. And at the BIS, we look forward to engaging in this discussion. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Mr. Tiwari. So it was a pleasure to hear your thoughts. If I had to sort of um, frame some of this for, for our listeners, I think that it was really interesting to hear you say that access to credit for small businesses is not just an India problem. Um, I think many of us assume that most of the problems we have in India are India problems and that the West has sort of sorted out everything on their sides. So, so that was a really powerful sort of revelation. And second, I think this construct of, you know, given that most small businesses don't have physical collateral, uh, switching to information collateral, which they do have, is really the only way uh, that we can extend credit to, to you know, for in India's case, 60 million plus MSMEs. Uh, so it's, thank you. Thank you so much for giving us that global perspective and looking forward to working with you um, on creating the global consensus that you sort of discussed. Um, uh, at this moment, I think we're going to uh, uh, show a brief uh, video, actually, um, of some of the other supporters uh, who have uh, uh, who have been with us in this journey. You know, there are some folks who call the future and who are sort of good at doing that. Um, and we've tried to cherry pick some of them and ask them what they think about AA. So thank you so much, Mr. Tiwari. We'll, we'll now go to uh, a quick video at this point. Indians typically operate with high prudence and high integrity when it comes to financial transactions. Now there's an opportunity for them to offer a window into this high integrity behavior, opening up a lot of supply side opportunities on credit, analysis, recommendations of their choice. So this data consent framework is going to offer 1 billion Indians two magical words, opportunity and choice. I see the account aggregator model a huge opportunity to democratize access to the entire gamut of financial services, banking, capital markets and insurance. And in the future, who knows? Well beyond that as well. See, this account aggregator is a uh, powerful concept. Uh, it's an important part of the India stack uh, ecosystem. Uh, think of it like this. Uh, today, there could be a, an individual or a small business which, who has many bank accounts. In each bank account, there could be transactions over a long period of time. Uh, there is uh, no mechanism today uh, to, so to say, inventorize all the transactions across all these banks in a single place, uh, whereby good uh, analysis can be done and good quality credit decisions can be taken uh, on loan amount, uh, tenor, terms and so on. The account aggregator ecosystem will bring forth a new dawn of empowered investors in the mutual fund industry in India. The investors will be able to share information with the AMCs and advisors in a safe and secure manner. It's a sign of truly promising times ahead. My best wishes.
India has built rich technological stack over the years which should be leveraged to solve varied problems faced by society. Credit to the bottom of pyramid is one such area where lack of documentary trail meant conventional lenders fail to meet the needs of such borrowers. Account aggregators are opening up the marketplace to such opportunities by putting together an infrastructure protocol that enables consent-based access to verified information from multiple public and private data sources. It promises to revolutionize banking in future. As a technology lawyer, I have long believed that it should be possible to build privacy into the design of the data technologies that we build. The account aggregator framework allows granular just-in-time consent that gives users more control over what is done with their data than was ever possible before. It is, in that sense, the first implementation at scale of the concept of privacy by design uh, in India. And I'm really excited to see what people do with this technology. India has a $600 billion credit gap, as all of us know. And I'm incredibly excited about what all of you are working on. AA, together with the public digital infrastructure that India has, will help our nation rapidly close the credit gap that we have. Much like UPI completely transformed digital payments in India, I am incredibly confident that AA will help us build a digital lending ecosystem that the world has never seen before. Uh, for any, any nation to succeed, scaling of trust is super important. And I think I'm super excited about this framework because this framework allows real scaling of trust where consumers can now work with unlimited innovators in financial services through a consent-driven framework that has been built with many, many years of effort behind this. Uh, I think things will never be the same again. Uh, we are entering truly the 2.0 of all financial services that we've ever seen before. Digital consent would provide frictionless experience to the consumer while providing utmost privacy and security to them. It will also democratize consumers' access to various financial institutions. The onus is now on financial institutions to come up with multiple use cases to help serve consumer needs across lending, investments, and other financial services. Account aggregator concept is a revolutionary concept introduced by RBI. This gives the power back to the consumer and gives them control to uh, share the data with the, with the entity they want in a very, very seamless manner. In my view, the financial services industry will leapfrog in India. I would like to congratulate everyone on the go life of account aggregator framework. I believe democratization of financial information is the first step in financial inclusion. And the account aggregator framework does this very well by allowing sharing of financial information while ensuring customer safety and privacy through its consent-based architecture. And the kind of applications that will get built on this will ensure India stays well ahead of the curve in fintech innovation. India's account aggregator infrastructure is a first of its kind globally. While other countries have discussed open banking at length, India has been quietly building out the necessary technology. Account aggregation has been discussed for a few years now, but we are finally at the juncture where it is live across banks and financial services can begin innovation. I'm excited to see the new kinds of credit products, savings products, and personal finance management that banks, NBFCs, and fintechs can create based on this new opportunity. Today is a great moment for India as it marks the formal launch of the account aggregator, which will make all the benefits of the recent digitization, the adoption of UPI at scale, uh, and several other initiatives like GST and the others that are uh, being rolled out and have been rolled out. Hey guys, so uh, I hope you enjoyed that video with some unexpected faces. Um, we're going to take a short break right now for actually two minutes, a little longer than usual. We'll be right back though. Thank you.